Welcome back to the Master Tech and in today's video I'm going to show you how to control multiple LCDs or liquid crystal displays from one Arduino. The communication protocol that enables us to talk to a lot of these devices using the same pins from our Arduino is known as Inter-Integrated Circuit Communications or I2C. You'll usually see it written as I2C or sometimes IIC, but technically it's I2C. I don't really care what you call it as long as you know what it is and how to use it. But basically what it means is that a lot of data gets passed along a common data highway referred to as the bus and every packet of data has a device ID attached to it that is telling the end devices what data belongs to it and what doesn't. If you have not yet purchased your LCDs for your project, I recommend you look for some that have an integrated I2C chip, which you typically can find soldered into the 16 pins that are standard on LCDs, and then with just four output pins, a voltage, a ground, and then an SDA and SCL pin. You might just wanna get yourself some new LCDs that have the I2C chip on them. They're not very expensive. I can leave links to a few good ones below that are not very expensive and save you a lot of soldering. So like we already said, the four pins required to do I2C communication for these LCDs are ground and voltage, which are pretty straightforward, and then SDA and SCL, which stands for serial data and serial clock. One of those is used to synchronize the data, and the other one is the actual data payload. Now on the Arduino Uno, it's not clearly marked on the board itself which pins are SDA and SCL. A quick search online can show you that the Arduino, yes, it does support I2C communications, and the pins you need are A4 and A5. Analog pin A4 acts as the SDA pin for data, and and analog pin A5 acts as the SCL clock pin. Wiring is super simple for these devices, but if you're building it on a breadboard, it's a good idea to put the SDA and SCL pins on a power rail, just like you would with the power and ground on the other power rail. The only slightly tricky aspect to the physical components in controlling multiple LCDs is that these all have an I2C address, which is how they know what data being passed along that bus belong to them. And the standard out of the box configuration, not applicable to all LCDs, but the standard is that they come with the hexadecimal address of 0x27. And the most common thing you'll see is on the back of these boards, they have three pads labeled A0, A1, and A2. These pads can be thought of as three binary bits that allow you to change the address of the device up to eight times. But the important part to know is if you want to change the addresses so each board has a unique address, you need to solder different combinations of those pins together. Otherwise, they're going to look like they have the same address and they're gonna pull the same data. So just by taking my second board and soldering the contacts for A0 together, I've made the address of this board 0x26. Now if I do the same thing but solder the pins A1 together on my third board, I've just made the address of this board 0x25. Again, if you take a look at the binary breakout for these different combinations, it's pretty easy to see how just three pins give you up to eight different LCD addresses. Now let's take a look at the software side of this, which is really straightforward as well. So open a new sketch in the Arduino IDE and then go to the library manager. Search for the I2C scanner library, again typed I2C by Lewis Lamas. Click install and then hit the three dots and go to examples. Either scanner or check will let you quickly verify if your boards are plugged in and being seen at the addresses you think you assigned them. But scanning goes out there and it checks for the full range of possible available addresses while check is looking for a specific address. So again, they both work, but scanning is a little bit easier. So open that up, load it onto your board, and now let's open the serial monitor, and hopefully you'll see whatever addresses you assign to the LCDs you have hooked up. If not, double check your wiring to the boards and double check the soldered address connections on your boards. If your boards are not physically powered on, it's a good sign that something's wrong with your wiring, but if they're powered on and not being discovered at the addresses you saw them at, it's a good indication something's not quite right with with how you assigned your addresses. Now, assuming you found the devices, the easy part of this project is really just addressing each of those LCDs as an individual device. Using the same basic setup 
code we can see from the LCD I squared C library examples that we were just using. We can define our various LCDs at their hexadecimal addresses like we just discovered. And if you have non-standard, non-16 column two row LCDs, you can input those parameters here as well. My actual code, which I'll link below, I'm just gonna create two lists of hilarious dad jokes. In the loop section of my code, I'm just gonna have one LCD display the joke, the question, and then a few seconds later, I'll have my second LCD show the answer while the first one's still showing the question. Is it the best application for using multiple LCDs? Maybe not, but it serves the purposes for this tutorial. And here, hopefully you can see how quick and easy it is to use multiple devices communicating over an I squared C data bus. And this is also super flexible and useful if you find yourself needing to just add another device down the line. You can easily plug it in on the same sort of connectors and quickly give yourself another I squared C compatible device. So again, all the code that I used here will be linked in the description below, as well as the hardware if you need some LCDs for your project. Be sure to leave a comment if you had any questions about what you saw in today's video and let me know what you wanna see more of on the channel. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters, Dale and Philip, and a special thank you again to Elegoo for providing the hardware used in this video. Elegoo is an industry-leading hobby electronics and 3D printing manufacturer, and I use a ton of their products in my builds. They're super high quality and easy to use. So thank you again to Elegoo, and be sure to check out their Amazon store page linked in the description below as well, which has a ton of components you can use for getting started in the world of hobby electronics. Okay, that is gonna do it for today's video. I hope it showed you what you were hoping for when you clicked on the video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, good luck with your projects. Bye.